It started out as a snowboarder that was backcountry and went missing. We started looking for him. Then an avalanche happened at Stevens Pass. We had to break off half the teams. On the way to Stevens Pass, we got another call in for a doctor who was on a hike and she self-reported a medical incident. We actually had to run all three missions simultaneously. I was put in charge of running the missing doctor search, while also trying to help coordinate and share resources to the other two missions. Probably the biggest challenge we had was just being spread so thin. With so many teams working in such a close proximity, making sure that we had great communications to be able to connect and have the conversations we needed and be able to get information efficiently to the other teams when we needed to move resources between locations. Hey, my name is Brandon Ben Powell, and I am an operations leader with the King County 4x4 Search and Rescue Team, and I'm a team leader with the King County Explorer Search and Rescue Team. So I've been a member for 15 years, and during that time, been on a bunch of different missions. And there's uh, several hundred people who are on the roster across all the different units in King County. We have eight different units, and the number of individuals who take time out of their days to, you know, do the training and to be prepared, I think it just kind of shows you the mindset of a typical volunteer. The average person that is a volunteer for search and rescue, they have a day job and they do a million different things. We have tow truck drivers and EMTs and you know people who work in technology and all kinds of different walks of life. The challenges of making sure that as a team we're always prepared and always ready requires a lot of thought and, and a lot of ongoing training. We're actually in the middle of a training session right now. Some of the areas where we have trainees are around that ridge and out of range of standard line of sight communication. And so in that case, making sure that we have the equipment and the training to be able to get a radio relay stationed or a digital repeater set up in the right way with the right frequency so that we have the ability to extend beyond what a typical range is for communications. And so having enough fundamental understanding of how radios propagate and you know how signal bounce bounces off of and reflects off of things, understanding that as a baseline, and then leveraging that to build plans, to have standard operating procedures on what to do in given situations. In my rig behind me, I actually have several mobile radios just for that purpose. Four by four group, team four so it starts five. with making sure you just have the right equipment, first of all. Second, making sure you have the right training, making sure that people understand how to use that equipment. And then third, making sure that you've got the right policies and procedures and methods for what to do and when to do it. And so one of the things I'm constantly thinking about in the course of a mission is when we start to get people beyond our footprint, where can I set up so that I can be on both frequencies, you know, at 75 watts and able to receive and communicate effectively with our command while also being able to receive and communicate effectively with those in the field. We use a bunch of radios across the unit. And so in the course of being in search and rescue and working with all the different agencies that we work with, we get to see and, and interact with a lot of the equipment. And so you get a chance to get a feel for what's easy to use, what's reliable, what do you know that's you know got a great reputation, what's you know gonna hold up to that. I mean, we're always out in bad weather. People don't usually get lost or hurt in good weather. I don't know why that is, but it tends to always be bad weather. It always tends to be in the dark. So you need to have you know equipment you know that you can trust. We send a team out, they've got one radio on them. If that radio stops functioning, we're really in trouble and, and our ability to use them effectively goes way down. For me personally, the fact that ICOM's local. I live in the Pacific Northwest and just knowing that ICOM is based here locally, like we're a community. I'm involved with Search and Rescue because I want to contribute to my community. And part of that is, you know, where we spend our resources and what we actually invest in. And so uh, we love having ICOM, you know, obviously just from a service standpoint, having them be so close, but then two, the reliability, the ease of use, all the things I talked about were important. I think the number one thing that we struggle with is information flow. With APRS, it is possible to embed signal and, and transmit coordinates as part of that. So today we use like a, a Garmin device and like a few other things to kind of do some of that tracking. Being able to combine those things in one product, that would be amazing. It'd be a game changer. I would say still affordable handheld 
radios that make it drop dead simple to just start sharing location by leveraging APRS like technology, making that super simple so that we can then take that signal and embed that in because we use real time map tracking and we're trying to keep track of not only where somebody might be, but what's already been searched. Understanding what area we've already covered is as important, if not more important than actually finding the person themselves because that way we don't inadvertently duplicate effort or, or redundantly search. And so we've got to be super efficient. So being able to real time track and see somebody's location, feed that into our tracking software so that we can check those areas off the list while we're also searching, would be, that would be brilliant. I'm actually not as involved on the ham side. I tend to use my radios functionally for the work that I do. So probably others in the unit or in, and others who are avid hikers can probably give some additional frequencies. But I will say this, the one ham frequency that all of search and rescue monitors all the time is 145110. And so knowing that, and if you're ever hiking in the Pacific Northwest and you get on that frequency, very likely you can reach somebody. Number one, if you can get to 911, do that. Call 911. If you can't and you do have a ham radio, Definitely get on 145110 and let them know it's an emergency. We have good repeaters around here on that frequency and we have people typically monitoring that. Always tell somebody where you're going. Always tell somebody where you're planning to park. Always tell somebody where you're expecting to come back because something happens and you do get lost. Your loved ones, when they realize it, they're gonna call 911, 911 is gonna call us. The first thing we wanna do is we wanna locate your car. We wanna know where you parked and started from because that now constrains our search area quite a bit. And if you shared with somebody what your plan was, you're gonna go up to Tiger Mountain or you're gonna to go to Poo Poo Point or wherever it is, like wherever you're planning to go, just tell somebody what your plan is and, and try to generally stay to that. That's gonna help us get to you a whole lot faster.